My dear brothers and sisters, around this time of the year, students of all ages, all grades, all types, have either finished their final examinations or they are in the process of taking them. For the ones who have completed their exams, they anxiously await what grades they got. If they're confident, they wonder if they got an A or an A+. If they were not confident, they worry, did I pass or did I fail? I even remember as a student, when I was in college, I would be checking for my grades five times a day, ten times a day, so anxious and worried, what did I get as a result of my work? So I ask myself, and all of you here today, what grade did you get? What was your grade? What was your result? Did you pass? Now you may be thinking, I took my final exams 20 years ago. I took them 40 years ago. What are you talking about, brother? But you see, I'm not talking about the exam of college or school, no. I'm talking about an exam that all of us have taken, the month of Ramadan. Now the month of Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, this was a test that we studied day and night for. You studied in the day by fasting, you studied at night by praying. It was a test that you had sleepless nights for because you would wake up, you would pray your tahajjud, you would pray qiyamul layl, you would come to the masjid. It was a test that you were so focused on the book, the Quran, the word of Allah Azza wa Jal, the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you didn't know you took that exam and it ended three weeks ago. Allahu Akbar. How fast time flies. So if you took the exam three weeks ago, then what grade did you get? What was the result? Now I know the challenge. The challenge, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we don't get a physical report card. MashaAllah, Brother Muhammad, 95 in uh, Tahajjud, and he got an 80 in fasting, and Qiyam al-Layl, and Qur'an recitation, 75. No, we don't get this. We don't have an online portal to log in with a username and a password, and we see the results in front of us, and it's a numbered grade. No, this is the challenge. But, how do we know what the results of our Ramadan was? How do we know, my dear brothers and sisters, if our Ramadan was accepted. How do you know if your Iman, your Iman increased or decreased? And this is what I mean when I say, what did you get as your grade? So inshallah ta'ala, today, we're gonna be discussing in all of this. And to be very open and honest, there is no one definitive sign there is no one definitive method to know your grade for Ramadan. There is no one specific way to know if Allah Azza wa Jal accepted all the good deeds that you did in Ramadan. There is none. But we do have signs that we can analyze and look at to see what was the result of our month of Ramadan. Number one, Perhaps this is the easiest one to know. Did you pay zakatul fitr? As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us, this zakatul fitr is an obligation for each and every single member of the household in your house that you must pay for. And listen to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said that. If you don't pay zakatul fitr, 
all the rewards of fasting in the month of Ramadan, they are hanging in the balance. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that the rewards of your fasting, they will be hanging between the earth and the heavens of Allah Azza wa Jal. They will not reach the divine. They will not go up. The rewards, your whole fasting will not go up to Allah Azza wa Jal. Unless the zakatul fitr is paid. And there's also some other hadith that mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said that it should be paid before Salatul Eid and that if it's paid after, it counts as sadaqah. So this is the first sign. This is the first method to know what your Ramadan got you. Did you pay zakatul fitr? And if you did, Good news is that the reward of all that fasting goes up to Allah Azza wa Jal. Alhamdulillah. Number two, my dear brothers and sisters, what is your attitude post Ramadan? What is your attitude after Ramadan? Was it that as soon as Ramadan ended, Alhamdulillah, no more fasting until next year, no more masjid, Alhamdulillah, it's over. I don't have to do any of this anymore. Was this your attitude, my dear brother or sister? Or upon thinking of Ramadan, you say, man, I wish I did more. That I left some on the table that I could have pushed myself. If you look at the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their characteristic and attitude would be that they would consistently ask Allah Azza wa Jal to accept the good deeds that they did in Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. Some even say they would do this for six months. Six months! Begging and asking Allah, accept all of the good deeds that I did in Ramadan. So what is your attitude post-Ramadan? A very clear good sign to know what Ramadan did to you. And yes, look, Ramadan was hard, right? It was a hard month. Longer hours, the weather, the sun, work, responsibilities, children, fasting, going to the masjid, losing sleep. It's not easy. But just because it's not easy does not mean that we should be happy it's out and we don't want to see it again. If you look at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, one of the greatest prophets and messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, he built the Kaaba. He built the house of Allah, the Kaaba. Now, was this an easy task? No. You can imagine the scorching sun. They don't have excavators and brick layers and all this stuff. No. It was him and his son building the Kaaba. What? Did he do when it was done? Did he say, Alhamdulillah, we fulfilled our obligation, insha'Allah Jannah, and forgot about everything else? No. Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was salam, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka ant samiul alim. Ibrahim said, Oh Allah, accept from us, accept this good deed from us, for you're the all hearing. You are the all-knowing. You know what's in our hearts. You know how hard we worked. Please accept it from us. So the attitude for the believer, my dear brothers and sisters, post-Ramadan, is that we should be asking Allah to forgive our shortcomings. We should be asking Allah to accept the good deeds that we have done. And we should be increasing in those good deeds. And this leads us to point number three, my dear brothers and sisters. How to know what grade you got in Ramadan? Al-Istiqama. Steadfastness. In plain English, continuing your good deeds. This is number three. You fasted 29 days, mashaAllah, tabarakallah. 29. Day after day after day after day. Have you fasted one day since Ramadan? You went to the masjid every single night. Did you get to go to the masjid one night after Ramadan? 
You were reading the book of Allah. Did you read one page from the book of Allah after Ramadan? Now, if you have and you see that you've inched closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, even if it's an inch, even if you did something more than before, this is a great sign. And may Allah Azza wa Jal accept it from you, Allahumma Ameen. But if you have not, it's okay. This is why we are here. This is why it's a reminder for myself and for all of you and for all of you to also remind all of your families that Ramadan was only one month of the year. And we have 11 more. We have 11 more months to go to the masjid, to read Quran, to fast here and there. You know, the believer is balanced. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said that the believer is like a bird. The head is the love of Allah and the two wings are hope and fear. Too much hope without fear, the bird can crash. The shayateen, the predators can get it. Too much fear without hope. Too much hope without fear. Either way, the bird will crash. No love of Allah, no head, the bird is dead. And this is how the heart continues in its journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the believer is balanced in this. The believer doesn't say, only one month of a year I worship Allah and I push hard. No. Now obviously in Ramadan you do more than normal. But the 11 months of the year, they also have rights. They also are times for you to increase in your worship. One of the best ways the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Whoever completes the month of Ramadan's fasting, and then he fasts or she fasts six days in the month of Shawwal, which is the month that we're in right now, Allah Azza wa Jal gives them the reward of fasting the entire year. Allahu Akbar. Where else are you going to get this? You fast six days extra, you get 360 days plus fasting and reward. And the good news is there's still one week left. We still have one week left in Shawwal. If you didn't start, it's okay. No one is perfect. I'm not perfect. No one is perfect. But the effort should be there to continue in the good deeds, to continue in the fasting, to continue in the reading of Quran. Read one page a week. Nothing extreme. Read Surah Al Kahf on Friday. Do something with the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't let it. Get the dust on the shelf and ignore it for the rest of the year. No. And this, my dear brothers and sisters, is what the scholars say is one of the best signs to know what grade you got. So what grade did you get? What was the final grade? Think about it for a second. You think about all of these points. Did I pay my zakat al-fitr? What was my attitude post-Ramadan? Did I continue in any good deeds after Ramadan? If you feel good about yourself, alhamdulillah, continue in your good deeds. If you feel, man, I think I'm failing, that's okay. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he was once... He attended a young boy who was about to pass. He was in his dying stages. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked him, how do you feel in this state? He said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have hope in Allah, but I fear my deficiencies. I fear Allah because of the sins I did. Meaning he's in between both. It's not all happy and I did great and I prayed to Hajjud and I did this and I did that. No, there's fear of Allah as well. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, these two, having the fear that you didn't do enough and also hoping for the best from Allah Azza wa Jal, these two do not come inside the heart of a person except that Allah protects them from what they were fearful of in the Akhirah and Allah gives them what they hoped for. Allahu Akbar. That means that the Prophet ﷺ is saying, when you have this in your heart, that you worry and say, man, I did this, I did that, I made so many sins. But at the same time, 
Allah is Arhamur Rahimeen, Allah is the most forgiving, Allah is the most merciful. Oh Allah, forgive me. When these two come together in the heart, that means that the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will give you that Jannah and Allah will protect you from the fire. Allahu Akbar. So my dear brothers and sisters, number one to conclude, ask Allah Azza wa to accept your good deeds. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of the good deeds that we did in the month of Ramadan, all of the qiyam, all of the siyam, all of the salawat, all of the reading of the Quran, and to accept all of the good deeds that we've done post Ramadan. Allahumma ameen. So continue to ask Allah to accept all those good deeds. And number two, ask Allah to forgive all of your shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of the sins that we may have done in the month of Ramadan and all of the sins that we could have done after the month of Ramadan. Allahumma ameen. And number three, my dear brothers and sisters, to continue in the good deeds that you did in that blessed month of Ramadan, to continue them. Continue them on a daily, on a weekly basis. Do something, even if it's this little. The Prophet ﷺ said, the most beloved action to Allah is the one that's small, but done consistently. Allahu Akbar. So to continue in those good deeds, and inshaAllah ta'ala, Allah is the most merciful, Arhamur Rahimin in the month of Ramadan, just as He is the most merciful in the month of Shawwal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all the good deeds that we did in Ramadan. We ask Allah azza wa to forgive all our sins. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us steadfast believers on strength and on iman to continue for generations to come. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallamu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد واتم الصلاه